In order to remove the pinion bearing, we're going to use a bearing splitter, either with a puller or a hydraulic press. We need to grab on the bearing race right down close to the head. Now we have to be careful that we actually grab right here. This is your pinion depth shim, so you don't want to clamp down on that. So we're going to grab right on this edge on both sides. The bearing splitter has two sides. A tapered side, which gets into tight close quarters, and a flat side. If you can get the flat side in, you get a better hold. Use the flat side. But in tight quarters, you need the tapered side. And that's what we're going to use today. And you simply adjust the threaded nuts. Now when you get them up, you don't get them up tight, you don't wrench them down tight. Because you're probably actually pinching down on the pinion itself. In fact, a tiny bit loose, like so, is generally going to give you the right hold. So trying to get right down inside here. So you're not pinching down the pinion but you're not so loose that you won't slide off of the race there. Now we can use a puller or a press to pull this bearing off. This universal puller set gives me a lot of options on pulling off gears, sprockets, bearings, what have you. We're going to use this in conjunction with these legs for the these puller extenders and this is just an adapter that comes off And these legs thread into the bearing splitter. We use these two parts of the puller to finish it off. We'll make sure to put some white grease right on the tip here so we don't damage the pinion. The tool is set on the pinion. The forcing screw is brought down against the pinion. And we fasten the retainers with the washer and the nut. Because turning this is going to cause this to spin, we're going to take this over to a vise and hold it in the vise as we pull that bearing off. Simply forcing this screw down will pull the bearing up. Simply fastening the puller in a vise like so will allow you to pull that bearing off. An alternative to using a puller is to use a press. Here I have a 17 and a half ton press. Looking right here, here's your scale. The inner one is 17 and a half ton. This would be used for 30 tons, and this would be used for 50 tons. Therefore, the inner scale is used here. Now, for those of you that aren't real experienced with the press, and that's going to be everybody in my class, if you get up to the third to the fourth notch, which is four tons of pressure, and nothing has moved yet, then I want you to stop, call me over, and have me inspect your setup. You might be getting ready to break something. And I need to check it before someone gets hurt or something breaks. For our setup, V-blocks will be used on the press table. Now, proper use of these V-blocks with your splitter are very important. The weak spot on this splitter is the bolts. Placing the splitter on the V-blocks without supporting the bolts will cause them to bend. So always make sure the V-blocks support the bolts. 
Now we will come over and operate our pump. Raise the pressure, start pumping. When you do this, you have to make sure that you're going to either hang on to the pinion or put your hand underneath it. There it's free. spacer stuck to the bottom. We need to take a close look at this spacer because sometimes they have two sides. This one is the same. Sometimes they're beveled right in here. This one does not seem to have any difference so we're okay with this one. For a reassembly, we need to, after we've cleaned everything off, go ahead and put your spacer down. And you need to find a pressing tool that fits two needs. First need is it has to be able to slide all the way down over the pinion. The second need is that it must press on the proper spot of the bearing. In this case, it's got to push on the inner race without hitting on the cage. So we'll see how this fits. You can see I can actually move it around. I can free spin the cage. So this is a perfect tool for this one. We'll set in our press like so. And throw our pressure lever. Okay, it is now starting to stop making noise. And a good sign you're all the way down is to go ahead and take a look at the pressure gauge and see that it's actually building pressure now. When things stop moving, every time you move the pump, the gauge goes up. So we need to take a close look to see if we're seated. Now here it looks seated, but I'm gonna take the pressure off and take a closer look. Now we can see the bearing is seated tight up against here. Get a screwdriver or a pick and see if you can spin that spacer. If you can't spin it, it's seated all the way. 